welcome back to Cuckoo for Books. My name is Salva and today I am here to catch you up on all the books I've read in 2020 part 2. Fun fact, today is the first time I am ever ever filming <gasps> in my bedroom. Ooh. Also, another thing I wanted to talk about that isn't really necessary, but I have found a game changer. I try to film without AC or electric fans around because it has that background noise, but also we are in the middle of a Philippine summer, so I have found an awesome way to keep my makeup from melting off having a fan around which I don't know why I didn't think of it before, other than I'm not a very smart person. Okay, you shall probably see this fan popping up in the rest of this video. So for the last three months, I really wanted to make an effort to branch out in terms of genre. So young adult, adult, fiction, nonfiction, contemporary, romance, mystery, Nope, didn't read any mystery this year. Fantasy, sci-fi, all of that good stuff. I hate to start off with such a negative review, but it's also good to get it out of the way. But the first book I read this quarter would be Dividing Eden by Joelle Charbonneau. Now, if you've seen my previous video, which is the mid-year book freak out tag, I did not like this book very much. That would be putting it nicely. I really didn't like this book. It had such an amazing premise. Two royals fight for the throne and their twins. I think the author was way in over her head when she was plotting out the story. It was full of not just plot holes, but dumb plot choices. Very different because you can have a smart story, which still has some plot holes, but at least you tried. This one had a lot of plot holes and just a lot of dumb story choices. So if you want to learn more about this book, I talked about it a bit more in my previous video. I'll link it right above and the timestamp I'm gonna mention it in the info box down below But I do not care enough about this book to give it even more airtime So just check it out in the video above if you care to do so right after reading such a flop of a book in my opinion I thought okay I need to find a familiar author someone I know will give me some good reading <laughs> I feel like I was gonna say good lovin', like, mm, that doesn't sound right. But I wanted a familiar author that I already liked, so it would be like, no risk taken there. And so I read Beauty's Daughter by Carolyn Mayer. This is a retelling of Hermione's story, Hermione of Troy, who is Helen of Troy's daughter. And it's her story before, during, and after the Trojan War. It's really hard to do a Greek mythology retelling in middle grade. I'm just gonna set it down because I like to talk with my hands. So many dark, violent things happen in Greek mythology, and if you're telling a middle grade book, you obviously obviously have to water that down for ages 12 and below. I think that's what middle grade demographic is. A lot of the story was left out. I know what she wanted to do was to have a female viewpoint into the Trojan War, but even story-wise it didn't make sense. Like why? Because Hermione isn't a part of the story in the original myth, so why are we making her a part of this story? And it just felt very contrived. There were so many other female characters that were actually in the trenches of the Trojan War that she could have told this story from, but to have Helen of Troy's random daughter, who most of us let's face it, didn't even know existed. Tell the story. It was really weird. Like, wait, what is that? Oh, it's a plane. <laughs> Scary for a bit. Okay, while the plane is sounding and flying above us, I'm a fan myself. Wonder where that plane's going. Okay, we're good. I can't, I can't, I can't do the flip thing. So that was two for two. Two books that I started the month of April on that I didn't really like. Okay, okay, what's next? Let's try to break out of this slump. So I did two things. The first thing I did was reread a book that is long tattered and falling apart and it is Meg Cabot's The Mediator, the fourth book. I've been trying to reread the entire series, go back to old Meg and these characters that I've loved just to sort of shake me out of that slump. The second thing I did was we are gonna go nonfiction. I went with Queen Victoria's Matchmaking by Deborah Cadbury, aside from it having that really, really nice book smell. It was such a breath of fresh air because I was quite familiar with the cast of characters in this generation of royal history, but there was still more I needed to learn. I think the only complaint I had with this book, I really enjoyed reading it, but the back sort of implies that it goes through each one of Queen Victoria's grandchildren's marriages, and instead it focused on sort of the big players, her heir, Empress Vicky from Germany, and obviously the Romanovs, the last Romanovs, and I had already read about that. There's this book called Born to Rule by Julia P. Gallardi. I talk about it a lot on this channel and 
it was a better version of this. I don't regret reading this, but I really thought we were gonna get to see every one of her grandchildren's marriages, even those who married really like not queens, not kings, those who just married a duke or a captain or anything. If you're gonna choose between this book and Born to Rule, I would say Born to Rule gives a more personal twist on it and it really gives you an in-depth look. After reading Queen Victoria's Matchmaking, it was now May and my friend Abby told me to join the Asian readathon, so I read two books for that readathon. The first of which was The Bone Witch by Rin Chupeko. This is a fantasy book. It centers around the protagonist Taya, who is a necromancer and it's her story from her discovering she has the power to her training, to what she's gonna do with it and how she's gonna change the world. As a necromancer, she also has this task to raise demons and vanquish them. It's this very intricate world. I love the world building in this book and I did do a full review of this book. Obviously, like I say in every wrap up, I have not edited it yet. So you're gonna have to wait for a while to see that. The second book I read for Asian Readathon would be Frankly in Love by David Yoon. And this is a story about a Korean America named Frank Space Lee. Oh my gosh, there's another plane. At least it's the plane and not the parrot. My neighbors have this obnoxiously loud parrot. I hope you never have to hear it because its cry is literally like nails on a chalkboard and <clears throat> Anyway, I was sent an arc of this book by Penguin Random House a while back. This is about a Korean American named Frank Lee. He is not allowed to date non-Koreans. He falls in love with a white girl. So it's his story going through life and love in his final year of high school and him figuring out who he is on his own terms. And I really enjoyed this book. This was such a study in marketing for me because the summary is all about him falling in love with a white girl. The title itself is frankly in love. Upon reading it, it was really more of a coming of age story. The love story aspect of the story, the love story aspect of the story, the love story aspect of the book. While it played a big part, it wasn't the most important thing in the book and it wasn't the biggest issue Frank Lee had when dealing with life. I think it would have been better if it had been marketed as what it was, a contemporary and not necessarily a contemporary romance. I was so surprised because the premise of the book ends within like the first 150-200 pages and then it shifts tone. It gets really dark and serious for a time there. So if it had been marketed in that way, I feel like I would have enjoyed it more and known what I was getting into. But that being said, I really loved reading about Frank Lee's experience and the author says that he infused some of his own experience experiences as a Korean American in the book. Obviously I can only speak to being an Asian in another country and that was only for like a year when I studied there and I'm Filipino. I have family in the States, they can only attest to being Filipino American as well. So it was really really educational to see it from the eyes of a Korean American. Someone who does have the Asian experience but not exactly the same. But after Frankly in Love I was like ooh what do I want to read? So I thought it was high time to finally read the sequel to The Thousandth Floor by Catherine McGee and that was The Dazzling Heights. When I say high time, the book review for the first book in the series you will find on my channel in 2016. It's been that long. It didn't really improve upon its first book, but it didn't really get that much worse. It is set in the year 2118, so roughly 100 years from now, and the entire Manhattan has been built and moved into a giant super tower, and somebody lives on the thousandth floor, one of our protagonists, and this book has one of my favorite tropes ever, a con woman trying to sneak her way into high society. Oh, I love it. It was like a guilty pleasure read, like I hate to love it, I love to hate it kind of book. I also read two ebooks this quarter and the first one would be Keeping Miss Kalila by Tara Frejas. So this is about an ex-couple who because of just the way life happens, work happens, different priorities emerge, they broke up a while back, they went their own ways, they reunite, only now she's pregnant. It's them reuniting and falling in love. I mean it's a romance novel so there are, are those ooh because it's steamy. Oh, the fan comes in handy. Yes, there are those steamy scenes, but there were also just flashbacks when they were in high school asking each other to prom. There was steamy Kalig and innocent Kalig, and it was such an enjoyable story. I loved both the protagonists. There's a reason why it's one of my favorite books this year. The second ebook I read this quarter is You, Me, You, Us by Bridge Bautista. It's a story about a sex worker named Joe and a contractual worker who works, usually works as a sales lady who's named Liza, and it's a friends to lovers story. Liza has always dreamed about getting a green card and moving to the US. Jo, on the other hand, has sort of taken control of her life. She makes her own choices. She doesn't let anything push her around. She knows where she wants to go, but she's also really afraid of commitment. It's sort of them coming together despite their many, many differences, deciding whether it's worth it to risk their friendship for love. And it's just a really heartwarming, heartfelt, heart-wrenching, all the hearts in this book. I think that's the universe trying to make up for the really crappy start I had with the two stinkers of a book. And the last book I read for this quarter that I just finished earlier this morning 
morning would be Mirage by Samaya Dowd. Well, it's my favorite fantasy for this year for sure. My favorite YA book this year for sure. My favorite cover. Ah, everything, everything. Give this book all the awards. I can't wait for the sequel coming out later this year. I saw an interview with the author saying that this was Morocco in space. It's set in space, which makes it infinitely cooler. Our protagonist is a farmer's daughter who lives in a kingdom that has been occupied by evil conquerors and it just so happens she looks exactly like the crown princess of the empire. So she gets kidnapped and is asked to serve as the princess's body double so that when she goes out in public if there's an assassination attempt oh well at least you just killed the farmer's daughter which is a horrible horrible thing but it was a horrible horrible empire who conquered them. I want to do a full book review of this definitely but I just finished it today so I'm gonna give myself a little breather. It was amazing. I Okay, I'm gonna stop talking before I give the entire review away. Just know, one of my favorite reads today, I mean this year, the heat, it's getting to me. What are words? Okay, I've gone crazy. I am gonna say goodbye right now. But that about does it for my second wrap up of 2020. You can follow me on my other bookish adventures on Twitter and Instagram. I'm both at cuckoo for books. Please subscribe and I will see you guys very soon. Goodbye from me and my fan. Bye guys.